Yeah, guys. Thanks a lot, Cory. Yeah, it's going great. It's, uh, there's a lot of cool matches going on. We got to check that one, but we're going to go straight into a almost a, a recap of how yep. this match ended. It is going to be Frozen versus Koglorin, and we know a lot about Frozen. We've discussed him already, uh, you know, a reasonable length today. But Koglorin, we are fairly familiar with as well. He actually played in the uh, the Winter Championships, uh, uh, the Winter Preliminary, sorry, last year, and actually very recently won Copa America 2017 Winter Championships as well. Plays for Pain Gaming, so. It's not a, not a new name by any means here. No, and funnily enough, you know, Frozen, the big name here for sure, your pick on the yeah. blackboard. But Kaglorin actually came into this as the higher seed. He's the number three seed this season. Uh, I believe 29 points to Frozen's 15. So in some ways, he comes into this as the favorite. But in dire straits at the position, we join the game. 2-1 down to Frozen. Uh, both players had their shamans banned. Koglorin was playing the quad aggro lineup, the most popular lineup in the tournament. 19% of players bringing the lineup that Koglorin's brought with him. Uh, Frozen, on the other hand, has the, the double pirate, double Reno lineup, the lineup we're calling the Pavel lineup. The, the, the lineup that Pavel was successful with last week. The second most popular lineup <laughs> in the tournament, brought by 16% of players. So this is two heavy hitters going up against each other in terms of players and in terms of lineup. And it's Frozen so coming out on top, two games to one right now, just needing a win with his Reno look. Yeah, and we, you know, we, we, we know he, uh, he does end up uh, t taking it overall. And I think it's a cool matchup to actually see as the last game mm -hmm. because the, the way Reno Lock and uh, the, the Mage interacts really weird in terms of Reno Lock a lot of the time just has to go purely defensive, but they have a lot of aggressive op options if they can clear the board. We do see the Burglar Bully does come down there. And, um, you know, one of the cards I imagine we'll be seeing a little bit more of in the near future as a pretty powerful five drop that may replace our good old friend as your Drake. Yeah, I must admit I had a minor heart attack there for a second because I, I wrote down quad aggro for Kuglorin about 20 minutes ago while the, the last <laughs> series was going on. Then I look up and there's a burgly bully on the board. I was like, hang on. That looks like a Reno Mage, but no, just playing Burgly Bully teched into the card. Reno Mage. It's a yeah. very, very good card. And you make a great point. You know, whenever down the line we're going to see the, the rotation kick in yet again, then we're going to see a lot more freedom for these, these interesting five drops to make their way into competitive play because that guy on the far right of the hand is going to stop terrorizing the five drop slot. Yeah, and you know, lo looking at the way the, the board shapes up uh, already, as uh, you know, Frozen's finished his turn five. Is this is already looking a little bit dire for Kaglorin as well? He it's the combination of Frozen having the board and being on 28 health, yeah. and having a lot of answers and potential taunts. So he has pretty much you know a good amount of pieces to the puzzle uh, to at least continue the game fairly safely. Yeah. Yeah, you can definitely see how this ends up uh, being a win for Frozen from this position. He has just about everything he needs in this spot. Um, Kaglorin probably spends the majority of this game trying to set up an Archmage Antonidas win condition for himself. Having dropped the Burgly Bully, he is playing the full Antonidas package. Emperor in there as well, I believe. Um, so he probably goes through this just navigating, trying to set himself up a win condition. That's probably the only way he could have won this matchup from this position. But yeah. It's, it's a long way off for sure. And yeah, again, no surprise to see Frozen coming out on top of this. Yeah, and the, you know, look at this turn as well. The, the fact that it was almost a pass turn for Kaglor, and he drew some cards with Arcane right. Select and pinged it, a dude off. But being able to just tap into you know, Twilight Drake is nuts. Like what does Tempo Mage do to a 4-8? Mm -hmm. Not a lot most of the time. And if it soaks a Fireball and a Frostbolt, then Frozen's probably like, okay, like fine by me. Try again, friend. Yeah, quite often when there's one big threat down on the board, the, the thing you're looking to do as the Tempo Mage is go for some kind of Flame Waker plus Frostbolt. So you lock out the big threat and then at the same time clear up the small threats with the Flame Waker effect. But again, we saw this previously in Amnesiac series when he's potentially looking at a Flame Waker turn, there's just a, a counteractive minion on the board before it was Acolyte, now it's Imp Gang Boss. Frozen is just successfully creating the most awkward of board states and that that instant two for one that you spoke about before is actually what does happen. And the Twilight Drake gets taken down by Fireball Arcane Blast. Yeah, and because of the lack of true pressure from Koglorin here, it means Frozen can just live tap every single turn Chilling. and he's not even afraid. And now we see live tap into Vendor. So it's negated the past two taps from him anyway. He's back up to 28 health. He has another big minion on the board and he's just tapped into Courier, which just opens up even more options for him next turn. And he doesn't even need Reno, 
boom, perfect timing, that was good. And, um, uh, you know, he doesn't even need to have Reno available, but the live taps, I was going to say, just continually help him get there anyway. Right. And he did play, uh, Frozen played a little bit into Firelands Portal that turn, just developing a, a ton of his stats into one place that could be Firelands Portaled on turn seven by Mage. But I think he's totally fine, even if, say, a five health came, uh, minion came out, which is average to good as terms of a result coming out of Firelands Portal, he would have Abyssal Enforcer to clean up, he'd have all kinds oh. of options, he'd have Power Word Tentacles, of course he would, why wouldn't he? Perfect pickup, 4-5 in gang boss. And a great minion to get it on as well. You know, the Tentacles wasn't, isn't normally the best pick out of, you know, a courier that you're going to see, but the fact that you could pick it and put it onto an Imp Gang Boss against Tempo Mage, which you might think, well, they have a lot of pings, you know, so, you know, they, they're going to ping off the 1-1s. One they're going to generate a lot of 1-1s one first because oh, of yeah. the additional health, which is just a nightmare when Frozen is already ahead on board. I mean, look at this now. The Imp Gang Boss soaks up uh, another Fireball, like, what, what does Kogorin even do to end this game? You were talking earlier, set up for an Antonidas turn. He might just die before that happens. Right. And now Frozen has that, that question he needs to ask himself this turn, or he did need to ask himself this turn, because Power Overwhelming is a great trading tool right now to take care of that Water Elemental. Power Overwhelming Mortal Coil, for example, would be a beautifully clean kill on the 3-6. But he's so far ahead that that PO could just help him end the game immediately if he picks up Leroy, or even without it, just forcing through extra damage. So I think Frozen, in a matchup where he usually has to play the control, has decided that he's playing the aggro this game, and he's just going to... No, he is going to yep. bail out at the I, last minute and double trade. Yeah, I, I think because it's Water Elemental, sure. it could just be a pain. You know, freeze out some of the... He could hit the, uh, the Sengin and just freeze it out for no reason when Frozen, you know, uses the power, uh, the power of Whelming, sorry, to do, uh, to trade as opposed to extra damage because it'll make him get more damage from his minions yep. anyway. Yeah, and yeah, totally fine with it. Frankly, he's so far ahead at this point right. that he can probably pick any of those options and it's going to work out pretty well. He even has the, you know, the insurance policy Reno here just in case something goes disastrous. Yeah, so again, Kaglorin just staring down. You can, you can see exactly how this just became a downward spiral for him. Not only is this game literally over because we're watching a recap, it is figuratively <laughs> yeah. over right now. Like It's so hard for him to climb back into this with so many of the answers that we see. Ragnaros is perhaps his one big terrible win condition right now, or terrifying win condition at least, but Antonidas doesn't really have the value to come out with it. Um, but if, even if Rag came down, there's no clean answer with a Blast Crystal or Siphon Soul, but there's at least a Faceless, which still puts Frozen in a really, really solid position. Glorin now going for the board sweep, trying to make his big push. He does have mirror images available as well, but it looks like he's going to hold back that for some Antonidas value now moving forward. Oh, just as if we didn't have enough tools. It's always room for one more, isn't there? Yeah. But yeah, bear in mind everyone as well, this is round two. This match has been played out. We know Frozen has took the win, of course, because I picked him as my overall uh, qualifier that I think can make it. And these guys are playing for the, uh, the trip to the Bahamas to play in the Winter Championship. So everything on the line and getting a 2-0 start is a fantastic way to begin that move. And now we have a plan, or Kagloran has a plan. Antonidas Frostbolt Mirror, Frostbolt Mirror Image this turn is looking very, very promising. But remember, at this, pos this, this position, Kagloran has no real read on his opponent's hand and he hasn't had a threatening push in terms of minion presence. So. Probably a good thing for Kuglori who doesn't have a read on the hand because well. it, it probably cry to a certain extent because there's just so much available tool-wise. Obviously, there's a, he feels himself in a reasonable position now as this. Depending on where this rack hits, it does need Forza. He's at like, his mind should just about stabilize at this point. I mean, you say that, that he, you know, it's good for him that he doesn't have a read on the hand. If he did have a read on the hand, then he could have just jammed Antonidas because he knows there's no answer. And he potentially would have got two clean turns of Antonidas out of the board. Probably more one is an answer, my friend. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, I, I completely understand what you're saying, yeah. Um, the Kazakas coming down now means uh, Frozen's going to go for a 10. Which I'm genuinely surprised, at, actually. Um, I thought he'd just go for a 5 here. He's going to face us the rag, right? Yeah. Oh, sure. Yeah, I actually didn't even look to face this. That's why, you're, that's why you're the analyst. Oh. Yeah, that's what I was saying a couple of turns ago, is like there's no clean answer, but the faceless functions as an auxiliary answer, and that's the point I was making about Antonidas. 
Faceless doesn't answer Antonidas, it does answer Ragnaros. Yeah. So if he'd have gone in the other order, and let me be clear, I am not by any means expecting Kagorin <laughs> to have that good of a read yeah. on his opponent's hand. But a game that we know is over and we have been saying is just looking one-sided for the entire process. There was a moment. There was a moment where Kaglorin, with a spectacular piece of play, could have actually got himself back into it. Yeah, as it seems though, we did see the rag snipe the rag. And again, you know, we discussed multiple matches before that hit feels like the nail in the coffin, just removing the rag. Right. And now because we can see, look, Kaglorin's been forced to use pretty much all of his cheap spells to just try and stabilize again without Antonidas coming down. And this is one of the problems. Once you're out of those spells, you're pretty much just out of the game completely. And that is one hell of a potion. Deal A, <laughs> summon three. All Imp Gang Boss bit, all the time. Yeah, a bit, bit of a, uh, a punish for making that Imp Gang Boss as right. big as it was. But I'm pretty sure Frozen is still happy at this outcome. More than happy. And now the moment you can see how it just passed Kaglorin by because now the Siphon Soul is in hand. There was one big answer there with the Kazakas potion. He's got enough time now, did Frozen, to pick up the Siphon Soul. And Kaglorin just missed that one turn where he could have made something happen, but yeah. way too much to ask to make that big of a risk. Having not seen a Siphon Soul come out yet, having asked no question to even establish whether or not a Siphon Soul was there. Yeah, and even with the, the risk play, you know, we discussed of like getting the Antonidas, it still might not have been enough. Sure. Because there is still Reno and Kaglon would have to have played with the knowledge that he is relatively low health and the Faceless wouldn't have come out. So there's a chance at Leroy Faceless for the burst as well. So very, very tricky to maneuver, even if he went for the play of like the God Wound. Uh, earlier on in the game but now it looks like you know we, we mentioned earlier frozen does win this game looks like he is just cleaning up the final bits here that's left of Kaglorin all over the arena <laughs> <laughs> yeah no option left he's got to go for the push again it's just an irritating board to to generate this on because everything gets cleaned up so nicely but he uh is look, look looks like he is just going to try and uh, hold on thinking about whether he wants to fireball immediately he could still drop the Flame Waker here. It wouldn't necessarily be wrong to do so because the Flame Waker missiles have a chance of just generating even more board with the uh, M Gang boss. But just he is like going to go for the Fireball. Yep. Fireball's going to be able to clear up the Emperor. Uh, but the problem is, you, you can just, if you just glance, right? Kogorin would have needed like chain draws of. of ultimate cards to really deal with this uh, frozen just just broken cards that are just like you play this you win the game uh, at this point that is really what he would have needed frozen so far ahead and as you mentioned earlier frozen put together or managed to put together just answer cards so he was far ahead enough on board to say well whatever you play i can actually just guarantee deal with and then just move on for the win to finish up the final bits of health that are left. I like this little cute play from Frozen at the end there, just using a very, very low value Demon Wrath to set himself up with Lethal for the following turn. Uh, it's potentially not going to work out because second Mirror Images was picked up and now suddenly Kaglorin is back in it with a Flame Waker and a Dream, but Frozen all the resources in the world to clutch this out in any way he sees fit. Could even Peddler a Soulfire this turn, potentially two shots at it now with a Ooh, brand. That's the way this game ends. I would enjoy that quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's probably not going to be. But I hope it is. He's throw away the chance. Uh, he's just going to go for it next turn. Nether into the two mana Farseer. This is probably the 100% safest in every yeah. world play that you can make. So do not blame him. He can fall back on the Peddler play next turn if he wants to fish for that last piece of damage. Kaglorin's just pushed the uh, Sorcerer out and said, look, it's on you, friend. <laughs> do what you can do. That, along with a ping to face, will not be enough corruption. Not going to do too much here, but as you said, two goes with the Peddler. Uh, any form of extra damage from this. And that'll do. Yeah, that'll do it. It's going to be power overwhelming to finish off the game. And Frozen goes 2-0 in this round. I am feeling pretty great. About that. If you picked Frozen and he goes through and my pick, Stanudachi, did not get on the board because the pre-show got cut. What pick? I have no I, idea I what know, you're talking exactly. about. I'm going to be livid for the rest of my life. He's making it up. Okay. He didn't pick Steinodashi at all. So we can check out two of the locations we have here. There's everyone playing around there. Oh, it looks like there's a lot going on, actually. It looks like a lot of the players here. There's Santa Ana and uh, Orlando as well. A lot of the players, uh, they look like they're either deep in game or like very focused on like what happened last, uh, you know, last match. You can see Hot Meowth in Santa Ana there getting ready to uh, work what he wants to do for the next round. Yeah, you're doing well so far. Hot Meowth, one of our two zero players, I do believe. And Santa Ana, definitely a, a huge hub for esports events in general yep. in the area, not just Hearthstone. But today, Hearthstone taking over 
There's, there's the most important game that we all know of we course. are. Uh, but yeah, great locations. Yeah, and now we're going to check back in with Cora 